Welcome! What's up guys, my name is Carly, welcome back to my channel and if you don't know me, I'm a new mummy to my baby boy Alfie who is four weeks old this week, it's already going so quickly. And I started this channel really as just a way to document everything that I'm learning, everything from like the postpartum experience, everything from trying to conceive to Alfie growing up and everything we learn along the way and just meeting new mummies, families and everyone in this community as opposed to where I'm normally much more active which is my Instagram account but please feel free to follow me there too as I do post most days and I'm very frequent with my stories. I'm posting videos every single Sunday, hopefully more to come as well, more frequent, but for now every single Sunday. And this week's video is gonna be a QA. and I've got loads of good questions from you guys and what I've done is I've gone through and I've picked the ones that are kind of like the most common, the most frequent, and I'm gonna go ahead and answer them. But before I start, the number one question that got asked by far was newborn must-buys and newborn regrets. That was already in my kind of video plans for two weeks weeks time because I thought it would be really good to give myself six weeks of having a baby and knowing kind of what was useful what was not useful so that I don't tell you something was useful and then you see me say two weeks later that was not useful because <laughs> that would be really annoying to invest in it and then have me say that so apart from that I'm going to go through the most common questions and it was a really nice mix to us between mummy ones and a little bit more personal deep diving stuff as well so let's get going Question numero uno, if you could redo your birth again, would you have opted for a natural birth? So I kept this one in here because I thought it was quite interesting. And if you've watched my labor vlog, then you'll know that I had an episiotomy, I had an epidural, and I had a von Tuch delivery. So I guess this person is asking this question to kind of say like, given that you went through this and given you had to have the epidural because let's say pain is not a good word, let's say the contractions were, more powerful than you expected, would you do it all again? And honestly, hands down, the answer is yes. I would like to try again for a natural birth round two. Whether that happens or not, who knows, but I feel so much more prepared going into round two. And so many women have messaged me being like, number two comes out so much quicker and so much easier. And obviously I know that's not the case for all babies and all women and all births, but I am hopeful that number two will be better. Whether that's because I'm more prepared or because I don't know the body's used to going through that experience then yeah it's something I would definitely like to try again so if you're asking that question to kind of assess whether you should be worried or not I would say do what feels right for you follow your gut don't feel pressured to do a certain birth because of other people around you or any external influences just do what feels good for you but yes I would do a natural birth again. Also in a weird way, and I've said this to a few people, but actually going through and talking about my labor vlog, which was never meant to be the intent of the vlog, but it kind of was like a bit of self therapy, like it allowed me to process the whole situation and then put aside all the negatives from that experience and just take out all the positives. So I actually don't feel like upset or scared or worried about birth anymore because of my previous experience. I think I, I feel quite excited about it again. So that's, yeah. That's my honest feeling, and hopefully number two is like, you know, not too far in the in the future. What did you use to keep stretch marks away? I get asked this all the time, and I'm not gonna sit here and be like, I've got the answer, I've got the key, follow me. Because to be honest, I think a lot of whether you get stretch marks or not is genetic, so I do not wanna sit here and claim like, use this, use that. But if you're asking personally what I used, I used two different types of oil. One is super rogue. One is from a company called Mr. Carter's. I don't even know if they're it's still stocked places, but my dad bought it for me in the airport. It's actually a men's oil, but it was all natural. And I used it every single time that my skin felt even the slightest bit itchy. So I would say for the first trimester, I used oil very heavily for maybe two or three times a day, certainly morning and evening. And then in, during the day, if my skin felt itchy, which is supposedly it kind of showing signs of stretching, that I went and lathered on the oil. And I'm not gonna lie, it's not convenient because clothes do get oily, your bed sheets get oily, but I just kind of felt I prefer my skin to be really hydrated and potentially not get stretch marks rather than worry about my bed getting soaked in oil. So I use that oil, which is, probably not very helpful because I don't know if you can buy it. And then the other oil I used was the Welida oil, which I will link down below. And they do like a few different pregnancy and postpartum ones, I think. But yeah, I use that and I use it religiously on my stomach. I never let my skin get dry. And I don't know if this affects it, but I drink a lot of water, probably 
I mean at the moment a lot more because of breastfeeding probably like seven liters a day at the moment but typically during pregnancy I would drink kind of four to five liters of water a day which obviously does keep the skin hydrated so I think that's perhaps a an element there but oil and water is my advice that's what I did personally I thought this was a really sweet question actually how do you feel as a new mother being so far from family during current pandemic gosh it goes up and down every single day I'm not gonna lie last night at five o'clock there were some tears <laughs> you know what most of the time I feel really positive like naturally i try and be a very positive person and jack and i have always said throughout this whole thing when our, my birth plans changed when the potential of family not coming over changed and all the rest of it we just said there is no point worrying and stressing about something that we cannot control i try really hard to keep stress out of my life and to not kind of get myself worked up over things that i can't control or that don't matter because I didn't used to be like that pre-Jack and, and Jack made me be a lot more like that and I, I'm just a much happier person. Like I feel like I've always been a happier person and then, I, and then I discovered this new level of positivity and overall happiness and really it just comes from not sweating the small stuff. So there's an element to it that I'm definitely like, look, it's absolutely fine. We're gonna see our family when we're gonna see them. And I have to say there has been a huge silver lining to it in that, gosh, mummies who gave birth outside of this current pandemic, you are superstars because obviously I presume when you first have a baby, you have friends and family and everyone who wants to come visit and you want to show your baby, you want to kind of introduce him or her to the world. I definitely would have been like that and I would have been on like coffee and breakfast dates and everything every single day probably. We've been out with Alfie probably four times total and they were very, very stressful. Not only was he crying in the car, but we had to think about milk. And if I was going into a physio appointment, I had to make sure that I had enough milk, breast milk in the bottle for Alfie to have from Jack and Jack would come and put into the clinic with me. And I just don't know how mums are like on from the word go as soon as having a baby. So for me, not being allowed to go out, obviously restrictions are slightly less limited now, but not being allowed to kind of see people and mix and be super social, I think has been really positive for not feeling any pressure to do so. And obviously Jack is working from home because of not being allowed to be in the office. So I've had eight weeks in the last four weeks of pregnancy and the first four weeks with Alfie of just pure Jack and I time. He's been on hand as much as he possibly can. And we've both just had like really quality time with our new baby. So you know what, anyone giving birth, coming up or worried about that, try and look at the positives to it. Try and look at the silver linings. Some days are of course hard and that's when I rely heavily on Jack to pick me up. I think you need that person in your life, especially when you have kids, to just be your like, I don't know, little yo-yo, right? Like they pick you up when you're down, you pick them up when you're down and you get through it that way. I think to choose your partner wisely in life, that's for sure. I'm just trying to focus on the silver linings as opposed to whatever the opposite to that is. Thank you for asking though, it's very sweet. <laughs> oh, I thought this followed on quite well. When are you thinking of having grandparents and family meet Alfie? So our flights are booked to go back home to the UK on the 2nd of July. They were booked on the 1st of July, but BA canceled our flights because they weren't flying as many planes. And so now we're booked to go on the 2nd of July. And the plan is to keep that flight. So the, the issue at the moment is that obviously the UK is saying you need to quarantine when you come in the country. We have quite a big fear going through airports and traveling that obviously if we did pick up anything, number one, we would potentially be sick ourselves, but number two, we would then pass it on to families. But yeah, 2nd of July is when we are booked to go back to the UK and I'm so excited and I hope to spend as much of the summer there as possible to be honest because I miss home a lot. This was a nice easy one, but I thought it was good to throw in. What, what, what pram and car seat do you have? The pram we have is the Bugaboo Fox. The Bugaboo Fox 2 got released like two months ago or a month ago, and I'm really annoyed that we haven't got that one because it's got a few features in there, like a ventilated um, cover and stuff that just would have been great. So yeah, but we had the Bugaboo Fox, which I absolutely love. I've always wanted a Bugaboo for some reason. And then what car seat do we have? We have the Maxi Cozy Pebble Plus because it just slots into the pram. So we just thought it would be really easy, but we are gonna have to reinvest in a new one in like six months time um, as Alfie gets bigger because I want the, the swivel one. <laughs> so much easier on backs and everything else. 
where did I get my maternity clothes from? Okay, a lot of the stuff that I got was not maternity wear specifically. So actually, this is a really good example. I wore this dress a lot. This is from Reform Reformation. And because it's stretchy, it just stretched with the bump really well. So anything stretchy like that, these kind of bodycon dresses that have a bit of give, I would recommend. I think they're a great option. They don't have to be maternity wear. But in terms of maternity specific brands that you especially need kind of near the end of pregnancy, brands that I loved were Lego Heritage and Bather Label. I did a lot of shopping at ASOS and Topshop as well. Topshop were great for just kind of casual jeans. And then ASOS has just a really big range of stuff. And then also Spanx and Belly Bandit. I got quite a few kind of pregnancy jeans and pregnancy shorts from. You guys know I've talked about them a lot. The Belly Bandit shorts, which I will link below, I used the whole way during my, my pregnancy for training. They were just amazing. They're not actually meant for that, but just supported the whole bump and kind of held everything in and they were just wonderful. So yeah, Betty Bandit and Spanx are also really good options. I did a video on my Instagram of my five best maternity jeans. So if you're looking for maternity jeans, have a look at that and hopefully that will give you some ideas. This really made me laugh. Why is Jack so camera shy? He rarely clicks pics with you. I also love that phrase, clicks pics. He is a little bit camera shy to be honest. It's quite funny because he does have an Instagram account but he makes it private and then he just lets requests sit in there and total up but he just finds it really amusing. I find it weird. Jack has a completely different job to me. He's a shit broker. It's a completely different world and he has no interest in social media. So I think he also feels like maybe if he's in it, maybe it would affect how he's perceived in his role in his company, which perhaps is a legit reason. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> there are times where I'm like, please, please just take a photo with me, please. And sometimes I manage to get him to do it and sometimes he's just like, no. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna change much, which sucks. I would love this to be a family YouTube channel. It's just it's just not gonna happen. He'll, he'll make the odd appearance. Yeah, not much more than that. Do you have any pain while breastfeeding, struggling with latch with my two week old baby? Ah, oh, breastfeeding. It's a world, it's just a whole new world, isn't it? Okay, no, I don't have pain while breastfeeding, but I am using a nipple shield. It's from Medela. I've linked it in my previous video, but I'll link it down below again for you. That is kind of helping with pain a little bit because obviously he's not eating off my, uh, eating off boob sounds really weird. He's not sucking, that's better. He's not sucking from technically like my raw nipples. So I think that's helped me quite a bit. I wouldn't recommend diving into the shield if you don't need it, but maybe if you are struggling with a latch, that could be a reason. Sometimes like your nipple shape isn't perfect for their current jaw and two weeks is really young. So I spoke with a lactation consultant the other day and she said that generally like their jaw and stuff starts to develop around four to five weeks. So that's a kind of good time to maybe change something up if you're not quite happy. But perhaps if you did need to use a shield for a week or two, then that's an option if that helps with the latch at all. I mean, ultimately fed is best, right? So you just wanna get your baby having enough milk, whatever shape or form that comes in. I did have mastitis, which was really horrible, but it, it was very quick. I got it, I caught it really early, but basically the whole side of my boob went really red. It was really sore. It felt like a big lump and I kind of was thinking other things. I was a bit worried about it. Anyway, that night I had horrible sweats and kind of chills and shakiness, but also felt like I had a bit of a fever. I actually thought I had, I don't know if I'm allowed to say the virus, you know, the virus, it wasn't. It was mastitis, which symptoms are very similar to the flu, but I just expressed literally emptied my boob, made sure it stayed empty and did a lot of massage to clear the block duct. Since then I've been okay. But yeah, that was a bit painful, but that was a short term thing. So good luck. I hope you're, I hope you managed to work something out. Perhaps have a look into the shields, maybe speak to a lactation consultant. Good luck, cause it's not easy. My gosh, like it's very demanding and it's very complicated. I don't know why they don't write a thousand manuals on this and give it to you in school so you're prepared. <laughs> this was a really popular question. Your postpartum recovery and how it's been, nobody talks about it. I think that's sad nobody talks about it actually because we all go through it so it would be so helpful to have advice from people. So hopefully I can shed some light here. I don't know if it's advice but definitely personal experience. So I had the von so I had the stitches from the episiotomy. Let's just break it down. So how I felt after the birth for I would say around two weeks was sore. Everything just feels a little bit tender, but I was really worried that I would be in kind of excruciating pain. It wasn't like that at all. With a few painkillers every kind of other day, it was totally manageable and fine. It's just a little bit tender when you go to sit down or you know, you're up and down from the rocking chair. That is a bit 
all that hurts but it heals really quickly that area is amazing it heals super quick and yes the stitches were a little bit tender but i actually think my doctor stitched me up very well and it was all kind of very neatly done not just talking aesthetically but perhaps where the stitches were and they were kind of all covered and all the rest of it so in terms of general pain levels in the first few weeks honestly they're totally manageable so don't worry about it you do bleed for a good few weeks and oh, it's just a bit annoying you have to put these huge pads in for every single day and every single night but it's nothing in the big scheme of things. Ice packs were a really nice thing to have in my locker, so I just had some of them in the freezer. I bought them from a company called Hilf, and it came in a really nice soft cotton cover. So that was good because it can help with the swelling, help with the bruising. And I used cream, I used Mebo cream. So actually they gave it to us originally for Alfie's head, from the Von Toos because he had some cuts up here. But they also said it's really good for the stitches and I don't know if it helped my healing, but that was maybe a nice tip to, to get some. So it smells like tahini, it's not a nice smell at all. It's a really thick, yellowy cream. But I smothered that all over my stitches for the first week and yeah, they healed, they healed pretty well. I also went to see my women's health physio the other day and I really recommend every woman going to see a women's health physio like during pregnancy and post-pregnancy because you just understand you get to understand your body so much more and you get to understand what you're working with and if there are any issues after where you've got like incontinence or you just want to find a way to help build up strength again they can help direct you specifically for like medical advice as to what to do there obviously my pelvic floor is less strong jack and i were out the other day and i went for i had to like catch up with him because he was walking too quick on the pram and i went for a little run and a little bit of pee came out and i was like oh my god no is this gonna be like this forever but after i went to see her she put me totally at ease and she was like actually like the strength there is really good you've got nothing to worry about as long as you keep doing these exercises and loads of people have asked me about what exercises i've done i think i'm gonna film a totally separate video on that because it would be good to get down and actually do the exercises on a mat so you can see but just really simple things making sure your diaphragm is breathing the way it should again because obviously the pregnancy changes that a lot so i'm doing a lot of Breathing in, they say to tie a belt buckle around the back of you so you can really breathe into the back as well rather than just the front. So kind of breathing in and then as I breathe out, you kind of pull up your pelvic floor, engage all those muscles and act as if you're really pulling it in and your belly button towards the back of your spine. So if you imagine a rope going through your belly button to your spine and imagine that pulling back, that's the feeling you wanna do because you wanna engage your transverse ad abdominal muscles. So I'm doing that a few times a day or as much as I can. I'm holding them for 10 seconds, trying to keep everything relaxed, keep breathing through it. And then also my women's health physio recommended just doing sort of small pulses that as if you were to stop a pee coming out, casual pulse 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 just to get things back working so obviously when you have an epidural you have a catheter in there and the catheter can sometimes affect on switch for your bladder and then with the von Toos as well she said that a lot of the time it can obviously cause prolapses because you're kind of sucking things down i did pay a lot of attention to my pelvic floor and my workouts during pregnancy to make sure that i wasn't overdoing anything and i was doing it all in the right way and keeping up that strength because one thing they do say is that your damage to your pelvic floor is caused during your pregnancy, not during labor necessarily. It's the pressure of a baby on that pelvic floor for nine, 10 months that causes it to get weak. So if you are just thinking, oh, I need to worry about it after, don't think that way. Think about it during pregnancy. And that was a really good bit of advice that I was given and hopefully has helped me a little bit with um, postpartum recovery. Diastasis is the other one. So I had diastasis i think that's how i pronounce it if i haven't pronounced it right please don't hate on me <laughs> i had diastasis which is separation of the abs for four fingers width the whole way down my stomach and now it's completely closed at the top and fully at the bottom and i've got just like a six centimeter bit of a gap here and it's about two fingers across now so that's still got a little bit of closing to do but hopefully that won't take too long a really easy tip that i was given was basically that you don't want to see a dome so if you're doing any exercise during your pregnancy and you start to see a dome in your stomach that means that you're putting on pressure on that abdominal wall that you shouldn't be putting there so stop it's too much <laughs> Extra weight wise, there's certainly still like a nice little handful here, which I didn't have before. That's 
I guess maybe a little bit of loose skin, it's also a little bit of fat, so I'm really excited to kind of start training again, especially to get back my strength, but it's not something I'm panicked about now, and I don't think any mummy, new mummy should be panicked about getting back to a certain shape. But for me, I also don't think it's a bad thing to talk about getting back to like the body that you're happy with. I don't think that should be a taboo subject either. I'm really excited to start training and, you know, losing this bit of extra here, which I never had before. But it's like an excitement thing rather than a, a pressure thing, which I think is a really important difference. How old were you when you got married and was it scary moving to Dubai so young? I am from the UK originally but I moved to Dubai at 21, just a complete change of life, a complete change of environment, I needed to push myself out of my comfort zone, I was in a job that I didn't like and I just kind of woke up one day and I had this look at my life and I was like oh my gosh this is this is not what I want my life to be about for the next 20 years and in order to change that I have to actively get up and do something about it and for me that wasn't just quitting my job and moving to another one in the UK I really needed a life a big life change so that's why I decided to move to Dubai was it scary no and the reason is there are certain decisions we make and I think when you're committed to a decision you then aren't scared of it because there is no other option so all you have in your head is moving forward with that and getting excited by it and progressing with it so when I decided to move to Dubai I guess I wasn't scared because there was no element of okay maybe I shouldn't go I think we get scared and we get worried when we don't know our mind when we kind of we go back and forth between the two things because then the options worry us or should we do this should we do that or what if it what if this doesn't happen what if that doesn't happen but when you're committed to something it's just yeah I'm doing this I'm gonna crack on and I'm gonna make this work and I'm gonna give it a go and if it doesn't work then okay but at least I try always give things a shot see what works out and opportunities I feel always arise from that I don't think people are lucky inherently I think people create luck in their life by saying yes to different opportunities and by pushing themselves outside their comfort zones and how old was I when I got married I was 24 so I met Jack at 21 it was really young he was my second ever boyfriend and I just knew like I totally just knew that he was 100% the one I know that sounds really cliche and maybe it's annoying to say but I, I really did he didn't know to, to start off with I had to sort of convince him to properly make it official the whole girlfriend and boyfriend tag he was happy just kind of cruising and I was like nah I haven't moved halfway across the world, push myself outside of all of this to then just be with a guy who doesn't want to call me his girlfriend, even though I was totally 100% in love with him already and ready to make that move. And that was kind of the funny thing about moving to Dubai. It gave me the strength to say no, because so many guys that I dated in the UK, for example, if they had said, oh, I don't want to make it official just yet, then maybe I would have been fine with that because I didn't want to lose them or I thought they would come around. And with Jack, it was just like, nah, I want to be with a guy who who wants to be with me. I think there is a lot of power and a lot of strength, inner strength that comes from not accepting less than you really do deserve. Yeah, I wish my younger self knew that. Anyway, we live and we learn. Lessons to pass on to our children, I guess. I'm worried this vlog has dragged on so long, I'm looking at the time. So I'm gonna finish up with this question. And then if you have any more questions, please feel free to DM me on Instagram or leave a comment below on here. It's actually probably easier for me to see messages on YouTube at the moment. So yeah, let me know. And I'm always always happy to take your guys' feedback on what you wanna see and what you wanna hear more of. This is probably quite a popular question actually. What exercise did you do to prepare for your birth and do you think they helped you? I bought something called the Epino, which I don't know if you've heard of, but it's basically like a little inflatable balloon that pops into your vagina and you inflate it up with a little pressy thing and it stretches things. So the whole point of tearing or like needing an episiotomy is that the perineum is too tight. So I tried that and I have to say it was, I think it's a great invention and so many women have, I've, that I've spoken to have said it's brilliant, but it's not comfy. Oh, it's really, it's not comfortable to sit there. Like it kind of made me feel a bit sick actually. A lot of the nights I was thinking, is it worth putting myself through this? If, or like just get it done that on that one occasion where I need the birth rather than 10 nights of 
making myself uncomfortable. Obviously, I didn't use it enough because I needed an episiotomy and I didn't use it enough. So I wouldn't say that was a product. I would say that was my diligence to the product. I actually think it's a really good option to get just to kind of get the sensation or something like that coming out. And obviously it's gonna help a little bit because it is kind of stretching the area. At least that's what I would assume. And then in terms of other things, whilst this may not be the kind of exercise you're referring to, Breathing exercises were a game changer. Breathing can help control your heart rate, it can help control what hormones are released in your system, how your muscles are reacting. Learning all of that, which I kind of learned through my hypnobirthing course, was so helpful. And then I did a lot of prenatal Pilates, which includes a lot of that breathing, but it's all about engaging your pelvic floor and doing very, very, very gentle core work that is not actually kind of core work, It's but it, but it is core work through your breathing. So you're kind of keeping that area everything as strong as it can be which is safe during pregnancy so I think a lot of the the strength work that I did for my pelvic floor during the pregnancy really helped with postpartum maybe it helped push things out it's very hard for me to tell because I had the epidural then I had the von two, so I don't really know I hope that was fun, a little bit informative and an interesting vlog to watch. Thank you so much for sending through all your questions. I look forward to hearing more from you guys. I will see you next Sunday for a new video. Please don't forget to hit subscribe, come follow me on Instagram. As I said, I'm super active over there and give this video a big thumbs up and comment below if you liked it. So I will see you guys next week. Bye.